What is going on, guys? Septile MC here, coach of the San Francisco Arcaniners, here to bring you the GBA Season 10 Week 1 Team Builder against none other than Lars and the Boris, the Adon fan. And I have a very special guest here today, the assistant coach of the San Francisco Arcaniners. What's up? I'm here to assist. <laughs> here to assist, here to make sure that I don't make a complete f a f a f a fool of myself. Um, coming back into the competitive scene. So, Hayden, um, what do you think we should do this week? Well, I'll tell you what. I don't know. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> this is the type of the content that, that the people scary, came right? in for. They have stuff, they've got double genies. They've got the Enamorous. They've got the Tornadus. They pair that with um, the Bramble Gas. So they have like a bunch of Tailwind support. Um, Salamence is really scary. And it just kind of comes down to... We can prep for anything. You just do not know what they're going to bring. So, yeah, it's tough. Absolutely. And I think with this team especially, um, Lars having Volcanion as well as Iron Treads puts the most pressure on our Fish Moth core that I think any team will have against us. So really f trying to figure out a way to get around the Fish, not the Fish, um, the Treads and the Moth and the, and the Volcanion is going to be the biggest thing for us here. Um, the Salamence is very scary against the team, especially with the Terra Flying. We don't really take Terra Flying plus Earthquake too well. I don't think many teams do. Um, the Garganacle, especially if the Salamence brings more of a special spread with Hydro Pump, but that would be a little bit wild. Um, but anyways, so we did come up with a team, um, and I'm going to remove now our team off of the video, and we'll pull up the first one we decided to. Yeah. I already know we got to bring the fish. Honestly, one of the bigger things that I am worried about is that Salamence, but if it does go with that Terra Flying, um, getting neutral fire is super nice. Not a lot wants to take Fire Blast from Chiyu, especially with Beads of Ruin, so this yeah. thing can pretty much outspeed everything with that Scarf and hits extremely hard. That's what Chiyu does. And, I, and I think that was the big thing with choosing to run a choice scarf here was the fact that Iron Treads, if it runs enough speed, I like I didn't realize Iron Treads was as fast as what it was until about when we started building. And I saw 106 base speed and I was like, how does this thing move so quickly? Yeah, that electric wheel thing is super quick. Plus, you can also um, you can activate booster energy, get more speed. A pretty scary mon. Um, and really finding out a way to check that with Chi Yu. Um, same with the Enamorous being quite quick. Um, Weavile being there still. I don't think he's going to bring the Weavile, but it's always an option for him. The Pomot, um, Pomo, Pomot, however you want to pronounce it. It outspeeds, I think, the entire team except for um, Reggie Lecky. So like, yeah. I definitely think... There's a lot think... of speed on their, on their side, plus they have the option for Tailwind on both Enamorous and Tornadus, so... Yeah, and 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 I think that's the big thing we kind of went here was his his team is very quick um, in the sense of a lot of Mons are at least above base 100. And I feel like other than Reggie Alecki on our team, the Mons are kind of more on the slower side. So we needed to... One of the benefits of running Choice Scarf here is we can run the Modest Nature and Modest Fire Blast, except for the Volcanian, nothing on his team takes it. Cresselia yep. doesn't take it. If it will end, but that's the hope. Well, I also have Flamethrower on this for that reason. And then the Mementos on here, really simply just so I can hopefully go into one of the other Mons on the team after, if it's the end of the game and Chiyu wants to do a little sacrifice for us so that we can get in to the next Pokemon. And the next Pokemon, of course, is Volcarona. Now, Hayden, you were the one that really was so gung-ho about Volcarona in the draft. So why don't you take this one away? Listen, Volcarona is one of the most meta-defining mons that like literally we've seen in the generation. Granted, that's access to any Terra type, but we do have Terra Water on this thing. And essentially, when you're looking at a Chiyu core with Volcarona, it looks weird because you're going double fire, but how often does Volcarona stay fire? Probably not all that often, especially with heavy duty boots. We're not worried about Stealth Rock on this thing. Um, and Chiyu, listen, you get a Quiver Dance up. There's not a lot of teams that can can prep for Volcarona itself. Plus, then you worry about a Chiyu in the back, and there's not. You're not going to have answers to both. 
honestly, when we were doing the draft, I was about, I was seeing Volcarona go for literally the minimum like amount because it was in the auction. And I was like, I'm not about to let that happen. So I got it for like 50, which is like the lowest thing ever, or maybe like 25. I don't even remember, but I got it for like pretty much free. And I was like, I'll take a free Volcarona. Listen, I don't care. The thing is clean. Yeah, exactly. And I think people need to understand as well with draft, it's so centralizing that if you have, yeah, we have two Pokemon that can run fire blast, but typically if we're able to weaken your one check to fire, then the other Mon will hopefully be able to sweep you after that. So that's yep. kind of where we're going with this here. Chi is gonna bring the heat and then the Volcarona is gonna kind of clean up shop after. And the Terra Water, we do have Terra Fire as well, but I felt for this one, mainly because of that Volcanion. Volcanion is the one Pokemon that our core really has a big issue with offensively. And I mean, we also have the other mods, like we have Gyarados and we have Rillaboom, um, even, even the Halucha. None really hit Volcanion hard enough on its own. And we kind of have to wear that thing down. He's definitely gonna bring it. I mean, the the team that I was testing against him with a little bit was the Enamorous, the Iron Treads, Volcanion, Hama, Cress, and Mence. Because I, I just don't see him bringing it and yep. the volcarona here a little bit of defensive investment mainly because i want to be able to take on um the iron treads and also enamorous i could see him bringing a superpower set so i want to make sure that we can definitely live a couple hits and then the salamence as well i want to be able to take a terror blast from the terror flying and then come back with a fiery dance yep volcarona is one of those mons where it's super nice to bring because going up against it you look at this that you pretty pretty much everybody has to prep for volcarona like you literally are going to see people running assault vests and things kind of taking up item slots basically just to try to stop stop volcarona sweeps um and having it just on the squad really just like it just puts so much pressure that like you literally can't not prep for the quiver dance volcarona so this thing is solid to have here in this matchup it's not as good as it is against other teams, but I think that, you know, it's still, it's still gonna be pretty nice, especially with that defense investment, so. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, we are running it bulkier, but it's definitely gonna be used as more of an offensive Mon. It does take the hits from Volcanion as well, um, extremely well. So it can be used as, as a switching, because we don't have too much to switch in Steam Eruption. Um, but that's gonna kind of go in now into Mon number three. And this is one that I knew from the start that I wanted to draft this Mon, the Regieleki. When I saw it, that it was it, it was legal. Terror or not, if you do not have a solid check to an electric type on your team, or you let it go down, Regieleki is going to clean up house. And this set Extremely right fast here. Volt switcher is so nice to have. Yeah, I mean, the fast Volt Switch on any draft team is pretty much crucial. Um, fast electric types are one of the most underrated, even though a lot of people think you need one. Getting a good one is underrated because you think, oh, I can take any electric type and I can put Bolt Switch and Choice Scarf on it. A mon like Reggie Alecki with that um, incredible base 200 speed, especially in this matchup, 200 speed outspeeds his entire team as fast as Pokemon in the game. We are able to run a mild nature on it because even at 252 um, investment, we outspeed plus one base 100s which is that Salamence, and that's the real, real threat right about there. about Salamence, especially. Yeah, um, and having the Volt Switch and T-Bolt is kind of a must, so I can build the momentum as well as get really powerful Thunderbolts off, um, and nothing really takes two or three of those Thunderbolts over time. Um, extreme Speed is to stop a sweep. The Pomot could be carrying Mach Punch, as well as the Weavile with Ice Shard. The Salamence gets to plus two, God forbid. We have Extreme Speed for it. And then Explosion, Reggie Lucky Gold Boom. That's really the only thing I have to say. Sometimes you just got to explode. Yeah. And I mean, especially if, if we're caught in a situation where the Iron Treads is out and we don't have a switch and it's Reggie Alecki against Iron Treads and it's just, it's the best case scenario just to let it go down. We can get off as much damage as possible. Are we going to be hitting it for 30, 40%? No, it's going to be 20%. But I think overall, it gives us a good little way to build momentum other than just going for, uh, up for Volt Switch. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, dude, you take a step back and you look at the first three mons we're bringing in this matchup, and they are all literally banned from OU. So, <laughs> they're definitely scary. You see any, these mons are just, they put pressure. So that's kind of the idea. Exactly, yeah. And I mean, I played around with thinking about 
you know, if I wanted to bring more offensive Volcarona, like a choice spec set. But I think overall, everything here kind of really goes together very well for like an offensive core um, with a little bit of bulk thrown in there. So um, moving on, and I'm going to move this down and eventually we'll get rid of it, guys. Um, we have Gyarados. So Gyarados was a really tough Pokemon to figure out about bringing with the set because I kept playing around with it. And Hayden knows, even till 10 minutes before, um, 10 mi uh, around like a couple minutes before this video, we were playing with the set and we were trying to see, is this gonna be what we wanna bring? Um, to the point where we were thinking of specially defensive Sunny Dance set, or, su or uh, the Sunny Day set. Sunny Dance. Sunny Dance. <laughs> but um, yeah, so we, we're gonna bring a Dragon Dance set here with the Waterfall, the Earthquake, and the Crunch. Crunch was over Ice Fang just because um, while the Mence is a big threat, if I don't bring Crunch, then I'm not able to really break through Cresselia too well if it's max defense. Um, and then the bulk is in there just because I feel I need to be able to take a couple hits again from the Volcanian. Same thing with the Lumberry. I went for that over Heavy Duty Boots and for the Leftovers because if I get burned on the Gyarados, that's pretty much the end. Yeah, Gyarados is really nice here. Easy switch in for Intimidates. It helps out with the ground weakness. Um, and with bulky Gyarados, this thing is relatively difficult <laughs> to kill. Um, and if you get some Dragon Dances up, it can take hits, especially with a Lumberry. They try to like, they can try to, uh, you know, get some type of status. But this thing honestly has about as much potential to sweep as Volcarona, and with some extra bulk, it just kind of like has good synergy with it with this squad. So it's kind of there for Cresselia with that Crunch, because Calm Mind Crest is a problem for our team, but. That's why she's crunching. <laughs> That's why she's crunching. <laughs> um, so yeah, so on the Gyarados, uh, it's it's definitely going to be... It, it's one where... Now that it's, uh, uh, the set is, is a, a, a solidified, we really can't change it from here, but it's a really big... I was really debating that specially defensive or physically defensive spread just because of how afraid I am of that Volcanion and the Enamorous as well, um, and the Iron Treads. Having... The passive recovery of leftovers or being able to bring a rest set um but we eventually decided just to kind of settle for this more offensive spread kind of keeping to the theme of the team um at this point yes sir so going up here we need some walls hayden we do need some walls <laughs> well luckily we've got a great one in guard the boy so yeah so Garganockle is a Pokemon that I have actually never ever used before. However, I do know that it is probably one of, if not the best defensive mons in the metagame. Am I right? It's very, it's a very defining wall for sure. If you can get, what sucks is you can only, we only have one Terra Captain. A lot of the time where Garg shines is being able to Terra, but in draft, you know exactly what you need. And in certain matchups like this, they don't have a lot of uh, a lot of answers to the guard, so I think it works out well. Yeah, and on th this set, we did just decide to go max HP, max defense, um, really trying to take on the hits from a possible physical enamorous, the iron treads. Um, I don't believe he'll go with a, like a super offensive iron treads. I think the fear of um, of the team here, I could see more of a like a like a speedy tech set, um, and then the guard can take two. Earthquakes pretty easily. He can get off the Salt Cure, do a fair amount of damage, and then kind of try to a, a pick off his team with Earthquake. He doesn't have really too many resists to the Rock Ground combination, so being able to just fire off Salt Cures or the Earthquakes at will are pr pr pretty good. Um, and then Stealth Rocks, you always need Stealth Rocks and then recover. I think this is probably the most self explanatory set that we could have had on this team. Yeah. He's just there to do Garganackle stuff. Garganackle stuff. Um, what do you think of possibly a curse set though? I like a curse set, especially if we're we're going up against somebody who has is really uh, physical and they don't have it, like you know a good grass or water, or at least I mean what what really works well for this team is if they do have you know a solid fast grass type. Obviously, we have Chiyu and Volk to take care of it, and mm -hmm. it can be there can definitely be matchups. I think where a curse set could work. This one, not as much, like, to be honest, but I, I feel like this set's a little bit more standard. I've definitely, I think in the future, a curse set 
could definitely work, especially because, dude, you salt cure somebody in, and then you're just free to set up curses, especially with that recover. And if you're late in the game where you've picked off special attackers at that point, this thing can Absolutely basically ruin them. just be extremely annoying. And that's kind of why I wanted to draft Garg, because I hate playing against it, so we just take it ourselves then. Exactly. And, and, and I think for the team as well, that really heavy defensive Pokemon, like, this thing is so bulky. I was surprised how a bulky it actually is. And it doesn't have bad like special defense either. Um, it takes on those electric hits from Palmot up fairly decently if it's a special spread. Um, it's able to take on the the, uh, the Fire Blast from the Volcanion. Enamorous, the Moon Blast isn't able to Oko us if it's max, a, max defensive if it's a KO, but what is really taking Enamorous is two shots. Um, but anyways, so we're going to go into the final Mon right here, and we have to bring Rotom, Slick the Rotom. This Pokemon, I've used it to great success in the past in, in other GBA season. GBA season. I want to say Season 5 it was. Um, I love this Pokemon in draft, and that's why I did a, um, a fan poll to see if we should draft it. But it comes out with three immunities um, to ground, normal, and fighting. It has T-Wave and Willow. It did lose Pain Split. That's one big thing, and it lost a Defog as well. So those were two big things it lost, but I still think it defends so well against general teams, but Lars' team in particular, Iron Treads resists the stab and is immune to the stab. Um, when it comes to yeah, Pama... this thing's just a really good check to that Iron Treads, which I am worried about. Um, but with access to Willowbiss, you can easily switch into spin blocks. It's kind of why this thing is important. Get a Willowbiss off, Thunder Wave, whatever else. Um, and, and it's kind of just here to stir stir shit up and just get, get it a little bit, uh, you know, weaken the team a little bit in terms of burns and, and Thunder Waves and things like that. Yeah, this Pokemon is going to be annoying as hell. Um, for a lot, for, for Lars this in this game especially, he he doesn't have too much in the realm of if I, if I, if we switch in on an Iron Treads or we switch in on a Pomo, then we're pretty much guaranteed to burn something or to paralyze something and then Volt switch around. And it's really there to be the tech to really set up for the Volcarona sweep or the or, or the Gyarados sweep or paralyzing a, a, a potential Choice Scarf, Enamorous or, or Salamence, really just taking them out of the game. Um, so I think with this one and running T-Wave and Willow, it was an option just to run the one. However, um, with it losing D Defog and Pain Split, I think it frees up its move slots a little bit. It, it really doesn't have like the four move syndrome anymore where you could run something else. Um, so I think that with that, I, th I, th I think overall it's just, it's the perfect mod for this team as well because we are kind of running a little more offensively. So having something that can pivot, ha a, can f a, f a, f a force the opponent to really predict a lot. Um, force us to predict a lot because that's what we do and it's fun um and yeah so overall um hayden what do you think of the team i'm feeling pretty good about it we got the double volt switch we got some good pivot options we've got really good sweep options it all comes down to i'm mostly worried about salamence we don't know if that thing is going to be dragon dance if it's going to be a special set uh super scary yeah, i mean there's there's a lot of options that they can run with but i think that our team when you look at the full scope of things we have a lot of options as well we have the rillaboom plus the hot lucha so people have to prep for that on top of volcarona sweeps gyarados sweeps they have to prepare for it like vote like uh their um volcanion the only thing that kind of takes care of the garganacle other than like a special mens or uh, enamorous special enamorous things like that so i feel pretty comfortable about the team um i think there's there's a there's a good opportunity week one you never know kind of how things are going to go and how people are going to prep but i think we got a pretty scary matchup on week one just in terms of how the teams kind of stack up here but i feel like no matter what our team will always have a shot because of just there's very scary threats like they're ridiculous yeah and to look at the team we have now and we didn't even bring the rillaboom we didn't bring the halucha um so that's yeah and that's, that, that, that pair goes together by the way just because of the uh we can run grassy seed on halucha on top of grassy terrain rillaboom to activate on burden yep. um, and get a defense boost in the process also in the future talking about bringing rillaboom might be really nice to weaken ground damage um mm -hmm. obviously you look at it we got some pretty decent ground damage i mean rotom and gyarados are there but chiyu um 
Reggie Lucky, things like that. The ground, weekend in that ground is going to be nice. Yeah, and 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 I think for this week, a big thing was to bring the immunities out of ground because realistically, Iron Treads really doesn't deal with the Gyarados or the Rotom at all. Um, so I think those will be able to cover Earthquakes. But, I mean, definitely in the future, Gorilla Boom's going to be a... I think a pretty vital piece to the team with that grassy terrain, and we can probably f make some pretty good attacks out of that. Yeah, I'm feeling good about the. I'm feeling good about the team we brought for this one. What's your score prediction? Do you think I'll fluff our? I'm gonna. Fl I'm. I'm. I'm gonna mess it up in the in the first week, or do you think we'll come out with a solid win? <laughs> I think easily win. I'm thinking three zero. Gary, three zero. Honestly, I feel like if Gyarados can start to set up. That thing has a lot of uh, a lot of opportunity. Yeah, no, I, I mean, think the Gyarados is good. A little Thunderbolt Cresselia, but I mean, other than that, Gyarados is looking nice. And see, that's very specific prep from Lars, though. Like, if he really preps like so specifically, then I feel like Cress will not be able to handle any of the other mods. Like, if he has T Bolt, then he loses out on either the Moonlight T Wave. Um, I think T-Wave is better tech than T-Bolt is because of the Chi-Yu switch or the or the Volcarona kind of hindering it there. The only way he deals, deals with Volk, um, realistically, is if he's able to get a status on it. Because yeah. it just bulky sets up in his face in a lot of his Pokemon or the Palmot, which... I, yeah, I think it comes down to him definitely having to bring the Palmot because mm -hmm. Gyarados just does put that pressure on a team like that, especially that's being their only electric type. Um, and then that's kind of why our thought process was to bring Rotom because we can easily switch into everything that Palmat has and then uh, either force out with the Will-O-Wisp pressure or get a Volt Switch for some momentum. So, feel good. Yep, so guys, that is your week one team for our game against Borussia Dawn fan. Um, once again, if you did enjoy the video, please comment, like, rate, and, and subscribe. Leave your score predictions down below and please go check out the assistant coach, Hayden. Um, you probably know him more than you know me anyway. So um, anyways, if you enjoyed the video, once again, comment, like, rate, and subscribe. And we will catch you guys next time. Peace. See you.